So my name is Dr. Jazz Sarah and I'm working at the Mayo Clinic as a research fellow in the cardiovascular division. And we put together a review article entitled Sudden Cardiac Death from the Perspective of Coronary Artery Disease, which will be published in an upcoming uh, edition of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Sudden cardiac death uh, is a common cause of cardiovascular mortality. Uh, it most commonly is attributed to coronary artery disease and it can be uh, a manifestation in itself or it can occur in the period following an ST segment myocardial infarction and it's important to identify these at-risk patients and to manage them aggressively and in our article we outline an algorithm that uh, uh, preaches best practice in terms of the management of patients who have had an ST segment myocardial infarction. So sudden cardiac death accounts for up to half of all uh, deaths from cardiovascular disease and so it's something that clinicians need to be aware of and if you're aware of the me mechanisms and risk factors uh, that can account for sudden cardiac death then it puts clinicians in a better position to identify patients who are at risk and to manage them more aggressively both with pharmacotherapy and with interventional strategies. We'll go into some detail into the optimal management of patients who um, have undergone a cardiac arrest and who have a STEMI and are managed in hospital with pharmacotherapy and again interve uh, interventional strategies. So for patients it's important to realize that if they are a patient with known coronary artery disease that uh, this is something that they need to be aware of and it should hopefully improve compliance with medication uh, and um, also alert patients and um, members of the public about the problems associated with cardiac arrest and the roles that members of the public can have in its management including using an AED to provide a defibrillator shock uh, and uh, to perform CPR as well which we also discuss in our article. A, a difficult area which we touch on in the article but we don't go into, into too much detail is the fact that uh, a good proportion of patients who have sudden cardiac death aren't known to have coronary artery disease. Those who do have coronary artery disease are already known to medical services and are taking medication and have routine clinical appointments. But there is this subset that is uh, unidentified by medical services. And it's very difficult to identify this group because they don't have risk factors that we can account for. Um, they haven't had a primary event which we can use as a surrogate to have them under our radar. So certainly developing ways um, of identifying this at-risk subgroup uh, using novel risk parameters and other methods might be a, might be a future direction. About 30 odd years, years ago the uh, m majority of sudden cardiac arrests were um, ventricular tachycardias and ventricular fibrillations. And they still remain the higher proportion but their, their con uh, contribution to the overall percentage of cardiac arrest is actually declining and the, there's an increasing proportion of pulseless electrical activities and asystoles um, and we were discussing possible reasons for that and that might include things such as uh, longer uh, time for emergency services to arrive and and receive patients who have had a cardiac arrest and also a prolonged period of time within which patients receive AED shocks and receive pharmacotherapy and, and that sort of stuff. Resuscitation attempts are lasting longer. So we're seeing a changing pattern of uh, the sorts of cardiac arrest that we're seeing. Um, and we discussed how the prevalence of different kinds of cardiac arrest varies depending on the setting. If a patient in a public setting versus in a nursing home versus at home we, we know that the, the sort of cardiac arrest that you're likely to encounter is different and therefore you'd manage it different. Some of these require shocks and some of them don't. Up to 300,000 Americans per year have a sudden cardiac arrest uh, and the uh, national annual survival from cardiac arrest is uh, approximately 8% as well. So uh, it's, it is an important public health problem and it's important that we as clinicians are aware of this and in particular that the public are aware of this and are uh, confident and competent in using AED devices and in performing CPR. Uh, an interesting aspect that we do discuss in our article is that uh, even if uh, the proportion of the public who can perform CPR competently has increased, 
this might not translate into an actual increase in the rates of CPR which members of the public perform. And we go into uh, some detail about why uh, members of the public hesitate in performing CPR. And we find that one of the most common reasons is because they have a fear of, perform of, uh, of harming the patient. And this is something that we need to address. Uh, and the difficulty and the important directions to take in the future is to endeavor to reduce the rates of sudden cardiac death further and to, if possible, develop a means of identifying patients who are at risk who aren't known to have coronary artery disease. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.com. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.